Welcome back guys, Ryan here again from the London Craftsman and thanks again for watching. And in this particular video I'm going to be sharing how I design a bookshelf. There are many ways to design a bookshelf, um, depending on the specs. Um, but this particular wardrobe is going floor to ceiling. It's an over height floor to ceiling, it's got a ceiling height of 2.8. Um, and it's going to one wall on one side, but open-ended on the other. So on the last video I made last week of a wardrobe, I showed from wall to wall. This has different uh, specs, this one, because as we're going open-ended on one side, we need a panel to finish it off. So I'm going to show you that design. Um, and this bookshelf also has adjustable shelving, which is different from last week. Um, so I'm going to show you a bit about that, what I actually leave for the adjustable shelves, gaps, all that sort of stuff. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it. If you've got any questions, fire them at me at the end um, in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback. And yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so we're good to go. I've got my biro. As you know, I like to draw freehand. And biro, I feel that it gives you nicer lines, nice bold lines. I've got my Tipex roller pen. And I've got my calculator. So other than that, all I need is my specs. And on site, when I went to measure up, um, I've got an overall floor to ceiling of 2,800. I've got wall to wall of 3,500. We're not using this entire space. This particular bookshelf is gonna be open-ended on one side. And it's gonna be open on one side with a panel. On the left, we're gonna go all the way up against the wall with a trim. Floor is going to be um, trimmed to the floor and it's going to go all the way to the ceiling. Um, as you can see, it's oversized, the floor to ceiling. We've got 2.8, so we'll be having to use oversized boards. Okay, so we're going for an overall make width of 2,400 total. And we're going for 400 deep, no more. It's going to have... Adjustable shelves only, as it's a bookshelf. And we're going to be dividing the overall uh, make width, which is roughly 400, uh, two 400, by four spaces. So we're going to have four sections. Four sections. This particular site has no coving. Um, so we don't need to allow for coving at the top. We can just allow our usual voids that you've seen before. All right, so what we're going to be doing is drawing in our back wall anyway, even though we're not using the whole space. So let's go ahead and draw that in. Okay, so we've got a wall to wall of 3500. 3500 site. You say site opening if you want. But we're only going to make this bookshelf 2.4 total. So we need to sort of put a line here at the back on the side wall and draw in a line of 2,400 overall make total. That is everything. So that is the voids, the carcass, and the side panel that we're putting on the end. So now let's go ahead and draw this carcass in so we're going to be using our leaving our usual voids so we're going to be leaving 40 on the side 50 on the top and this one is open-ended guys squiggly lines today i haven't had my wheat bix all right so now we've got this we've got our overall size to finish a carcass that has, isn't going in between a wall, you need some kind of panel, don't you? So what I've done here, I've stopped this carcass short of the overall make line because we need to allow 18 mil for a panel to go on there. So let's go ahead and mark our void. So at the bottom here, or here, we can also write 40 mil void, 50 mil void there, 50 mil void there. So we've got our voids. Top, bottom, and side. So we could transfer that to the bottom, 40 mil. In line with the side of the wardrobe here, we're gonna have a side panel or a cheek. I refer to it as a cheek. 
that goes on the end. I'm not going to draw that on just yet as it will confuse you maybe the way the drawing looks. I want to draw the actual wardrobe itself, the bookshelf first, before I draw that cheek in. So we're going to be dividing this unit into four because it's going to be a bookshelf. We don't want the shelves massive. We want to keep them quite short so they don't deflect. Bow under load. Um, so we're going to stick to four sections. So let's go ahead and um, draw those in. Before we do, we need to figure out are these uprights going to be running all the way through? Are the tops and bottoms going to be running all the way through? And in this case, it's so much easier if you just draw the tops and bottoms in. God, really, I've got the shakes today. Um, I'm going to be allowing 18 mil here. 18. 18. So our tops and bottoms are running all the way through. So now we know all our uprights, divisions, sides, whatever you want to call them, they're all going to be the same in height at least. So let's go ahead and draw these two sides in. That's one. That's two. As you can see, they go in between the tops and bottoms. So now we've got that, we need to divide this space into four spaces. So technically, that's three divisions, isn't it? So let's try and find halfway and then quarter, quarter. We've got our three marks, roughly. Let's draw those down. And anything that is a division, personally, I wouldn't go anything over 18. Anything that's a top, a bottom, a side, or any kind of division, you don't need to go anything more than 18 mil. So let's draw 18s on all of these. 18. 18, 18, 18, 18. Okay, so we've drawn those in, but we haven't got any other sizes. So what we need to do is get our 2.4, which is our overall make size total. So remember, that's from the wall to the end panel, which the customer doesn't want this unit to be any bigger than 2.4. We need to go, let's transfer it down here as well. Two, four, hundred, overall, make, total. Okay, so now we know the carcass width from this. We're allowing 18 mil for our side panel or cheek, and we've got 40 mil void. So taking 40 and 18 off of 2.4 gives us 2, 3, 4, 2. So 2, 3, 4, Two. make carcass size. So this is the actual size of the carcass. I could have divided this carcass into two and made it into two, but easier. If you've got a small space, you may want to divide this up. Or if you've got even smaller space, you can make four singles. But the more you divide it up, the more sides you will be using. Um, you've got to be a little bit clever as well if you want them all to look 18 mil as well, you may have to use two nines to make 18 and so on, so on. This particular unit would be going in a big room, so I've got space to lay this down on the floor and screw it all together as a whole unit. Okay, so from our 2342, two, we really want to know our inside sizes of each space because ultimately we need to know our overall adjustable shelf size, don't we? So let's get a calculator. We've got two, three, four, two make size from there to there. Two, three, four, two, minus one, two, three, four, five times 18. I know that's 90. Minus 90 equals two, five, sorry, two, two, five, two, the overall space left over, that, 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 and that. We then need to divide it by four as well. So divide that by four equals now we've got an inside space of 563 in between every section. I'm only going to draw it on one. 563 inside. I write ints because it's just short and easy. And I know what it means. 
Oh, that was my dog making that noise, by the way. Um, okay, so we've got that size, and as we're doing adjustable shelves in between each section, we don't want these adjustable shelves to be 563, do we? We'll never get them in. So we need to take off 2 mil in width. So we could just write ADJ shelves, 2 mil off the width, 561. And you could just write all adjustable shelves, 561. Alright guys, so sorry about that. A little bit just cut out. I thought it was recording. It's cut out about 30 seconds. So what I've done is I've drawn this cheek in here. This cheek has just been drawn and it's 18 mil and it goes from floor to ceiling and it's only 18 mil thick. So you'll see that in another drawing in a moment when I come to draw the top view. Um, the other bit I just drew out was this overall upright size. So the way we got the upright size, which is all these uprights here, the sides or divisions, whatever you want to call them. We've got our overall carcass make size 2.7, 2700, minus 18 and 18, because they are in between the tops and bottoms, gave us 2664. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw this top view of this bookshelf. So we're going to be drawing in the side wall. And we're going to be drawing in the back wall, which is, we don't really need to know how long this back wall is. Our bookshelf is not the whole way across. And let's draw in our rectangle representing the bookshelf. And there we go. And our six mil backing. There we go. So now we've got our six mil, let's draw in our trim. As you've probably seen in the last video, how to design a wardrobe. This is how I do my trims mainly. I'm going to stick to this route for this side trim. Let's bring this back. So for the side trim, the top trim and the bottom trim, they're all going to be in line with the front of the carcass. And this, if you're looking through, ultimately, you know, that would be the top and the bottom trim looking through in line with the front of the carcass. So now we need to draw in this side cheek as well. This side cheek covers the void when you look through the side and neatens the wardrobe from top to bottom and wall to the front. And we're going to be making that flush with the carcass itself. So we've got a 20 mil void at the back and we've got a six mil backing. So the customer stated that they didn't want to come out more than 400 in total. So we've got 26 mil um, from the void and the backing and overall 400 from that point to that point. 400 minus 26 equals 374. There we go. 374 carcass depth. That would be from this point to this point. 374. While we're drawing on this part, let's draw in our sides as well. As the tops and bottoms run through and we're looking at it through the top, I'm going to draw these divisions and sides in as dotted lines as you're looking through the actual top. That's a side. That's a side. I'm going to draw one roughly in the centre. And then one roughly here. And then one roughly here. We can also transfer some of the measurements that we got from our other drawing. So we had an inside size of 563 inch. So we've got the depth of the carcass and we've got the inside of every division. Okay, so let's run over the overalls. Remember from the wall to the end, we had a 2400 overall. We took away 40 here and we took away 18. And that gives us a total of 2342 two, uh, make carcass. When it comes to fitting these backings, we're not going to get a backing that wide, are we? If you think about it, we can get a backing that is tall enough, but
but we haven't got a backing that's tall enough and wide enough at the same time. So we're going to be making that in two, one here and one here. So ultimately we need to put the division of these backings dead center of this middle division. So we need to divide this backing up into two here, which is called the center line, CL. So when it comes to the cutting list, we need to know the width of these cut of these backings. So we've got an overall make carcass of two, two, three, four, two, and we're dividing that by two, divided by two equals. 11.71. So there we go. So we got two backings at 11.71, which are sharing this division, 9mm and 9mm. When it comes to fixing these this backing on this particular division, you may have to slightly pitch the screws in or the pins in, being very careful not to come through the sides, but it is possible, and I've done it many times. Um, I actually prefer screws when putting on my backings. I never use pins because if it gets if it gets knocked, it'd be like an IKEA unit. You knock it, everyone pins them on, it always come loose, the wardrobe ends up falling down. So we've got our backing widths here. So I think we've got everything. So this is our drawing. We've got the overall length of our uprights. We've got the overall carcass height. We've got the top and bottom lengths. Um, inside sizes, our shelf make width. One thing we haven't discussed is how deep we want to make the shelves. Um, I think on this occasion, we're just going to stick to the carcass size 374, just to make it simple. We could step it back 10 mil, make them 364 if you wanted to. But if you are routering little notches for your shelf pins, make sure there's a 10 mil offset between the two. Otherwise, they won't learn, line up when you're routering them. Okay, so little squiggly line. Cutting. List. Okay. So let's start with the tops and bottoms. Okay, so tops and bottoms, they're the length of the actual carcass, which is two, three, four, two. T, B, two at two, three, four, two. By the overall carcass depth, 374. By 18. Uprights or otherwise known as size divisions. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Five at, here we go, two, six, six, four. Two, six, six, four. And they're the same depth as the tops and bottoms by 374 by 18. Now let's stick with the 18 mil. Let's carry on with this cheek because we know that's 18 mil. So we're gonna go this cheek needs to go floor to ceiling. We're going to go 28 plus 350 mil. So we're going to go 2850. Cheek. One at 2850. Bye. And this cheek needs to go from the front of the carcass to the wall, which is 400. But we're going to add on another 25 mil to scribe. By 425 by 18. I want to make thicker shelves. So any all the adjustable shelves when here, I'm going to make 25 mil, even though they don't span over 600 mil, they're gonna be taking books, so I don't want them to bend, so we're going 25 mil deep. Okay, so we're gonna go ADJ shelves. Um, I've worked out before that if I put roughly six shelves in here on the adjustable pegs, remember they're adjustable, so they could be moved anywhere, these spaces can be changed. Um, I'll have rough spaces of about 350 in between. So I'm going to go for um, six shelves in each. Six, eight, sorry, six, 12, 18, 24. So we're going to go adjustable shelves, 24 at width. So we're going to go for five, six, three minus our two mil, remember? Five, six, three minus two mil. We're going to make these adjustable shelves, five, six, one. Five, six, one. And we're going to keep them to the same depth as the carcass, three, seventy four. And we're going 25 mil, aren't we? Remember, I put different shapes around different thicknesses so I don't cut them in the wrong thickness. Uh, backings. And we're obviously two, one, two, because we're dividing them. So we've got two at two 700, which is the carcass, two at 
to 700 carcass height by the width which we're dividing 1171 by six on this occasion never any less never any more but always use a backing that is my advice okay so lastly but not least it's the trims we've done the tops and bottoms we've done all the uprights done all the adjustable shelves and we've done this side cheek all these trims are going to be scribed so i'm going to allow 80 mil on each so 80 80 and 80 rather than these sizes to allow for discrepancies in the wall on this particular one we've got no more than 2.4 overall make width so i'm going to go all right well one full rip of a sheet which is 2440 is going to be plenty we're going to cut that on site so top and bottom are going to be t b trims top and bottom trims two at i'm going to make them 2440 which is a rip of a sheet as it's going to be cut down by 80 mil because we need to scribe it by 18. Last trim and the last component that we need to take into account is this side trim. As I fit the bottom and the top trim the first, well, side cheek will go on first, bottom trim will then butt up against this cheek, top trim will butt up against this cheek. This trim will run all the way through and this trim will run all the way through. So effectively we need a trim that goes from this point to this point, which is the same size as the carcass. Look here, the carcass size is 2.7. Um, side trim. One at 2700 by, again, we're gonna just stick with 80 as we need to scribe it by 18. Just means we can cut that trim on size to length, one less thing to do on site. Top and bottom will need to be cut to length and width on site. And this side cheek will need to be scribed on site in height because the ceilings and the floors are generally out of square and the walls are generally out of level too. So I think I've covered everything. If you're using different materials like oak veneer or any kind of veneer, remember that's going to be 19 mil instead. If you're going smaller openings, you may be able to just get away with 18 mil shelves um, rather than 25. Or if you're not loading it up, if it's a display unit, you can use 18 mil. Um, if you've got doors, you'll need to take into account your gap. So if you've got doors, we're gonna have a three mil gap here between our cheek. This cheek will come out another 25 mil. You're gonna have three mil, three mil, three mil, three mil, and it'll go all the way to the end here. So you've got your overall mate carcass width, minus three, six, nine, 12. So it'll be two, three, four, two minus 12, divided by one, two, three, four. That's your door widths by two seven hundred because they're the same size of the carcass but i think that is about it um it's a very basic run over for you there it should be enough to help you understand if you need to ask any more questions to understand feel free to ask you know i need some more ideas on um, what you guys want me to make um ultimately so it'd be lovely to hear some feedback in the comment bars um what parts you like, what parts you don't. Other than that, guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thumbs up if you can. Um, subscribe, share, be much appreciated, and I will see you in the next one. Ciao for now. Bye-bye-bye.